There are two ways that you can insert type in your document in Photoshop. There's area type and point type. Let's deal with point type first. The first thing you do is grab your type tool at the bottom of the screen here. You'll click your cursor on the screen and start typing. So if I wanted to write stand up comedy, you'll see that the text will just continue to expand and expand and expand and expand based on that point. Now I have it set to center line, but if I had it set to left align, it will continue to go off to the right as long or until I set down paragraph marker by clicking my enter or return key. This is good for working with small bits of type, a couple of words, or if you're working in a smaller font than 72 pixels, or points rather, that would be fine. But if you have a lot of text, what you'd probably do instead is work with area type. So I'm going to leave this one at point type, and then I'll put this in position here, and we can change some options about this. So for instance, maybe I want to type in a different value for this. This is anti-aliasing. This is to smooth the edges of your type, and I would always leave it on smooth or sharp, possibly, to improve the shapes of the letters. Here's where you can choose your different font faces, and some fonts have different styles, like bold or italic, and if they did, you could select it from the second menu. Here's your alignment, so we could have it be center aligned. And then if you need more options, you can open up this panel here. I also have an option to open it up from my panel dock to the left, and here's where I can set the leading. Leading is the line spacing between any two lines of type. And the default is to do 120% of whatever font size you happen to have. So whatever 120% of 88, that's what it would be. Now I think the word comedy needs to come up. So what I would probably do is type in 88 and see how that looks. And then I could increase or decrease the size based on the number that I put in there. So maybe I would want to go down to something like 75 to really bring those lines of type close together. Now that's regular point type. Let me show you how it is to work with area type. So as I showed you before, you can set down your type and then go and adjust the character of the type that you've selected after you've written your words, or you can adjust the type attributes before you begin typing. So if I know what font I want to use, which I do, I can plug that information in before I begin. So I'm going to use Weston Free, and I know I want a particular font size, so I want to do 34 point. And then I'm not going to worry about the letting, except for I will set it back to auto. Whoops. Actually, let me go backwards a step because I want to create a new layer, and I don't want to be modifying this one. I want to create a new layer. All right, so what we'll do is we'll go back into the type panel, and we'll change that again. So I'm going to grab Weston, setting the size, and readjusting the letting to auto. And then I want to continue using white, so I don't need to change the color. But if I did, I could go in here and choose a different color. I could also set the space between the letters. This is kerning between any two characters. Like for instance, if I saw that the letter space between the M and the E was a little bit too tight, I can widen that up and I'll show you that in just a second. There's also tracking, which is all of the letters between a set of selected characters, and I'll show you that in a second too. You can increase or decrease the scale of your selection vertically and horizontally, as well as raise or lower the baseline of any selected type. And then you could also apply bold, italic, all caps, small caps, super or subscripting, underlining, and strike through all through this panel. So that's an easy way to work. So now we're talking about doing area type. With area type, what you do is you create a box and then your type flows inside of it. So I'm going to put some type down here. I'm just clicking and dragging arbitrarily to create an area type box. And once I start typing, my type will flow inside of it. Now, I would rather have left aligned type, so I'll click that before I begin typing. And then I can type in a few things. Now, I'm going to have my all caps on for this, because I want to say open mic, and then hitting my enter or return key to fall down to the next line. And maybe I want to say Saturday night. But I want that type to be a little smaller, so I'll select it and change the font size. Let's go down to 20. Put my cursor at the end of that hit enter again, and then maybe I want to say something like, you know, 8 p.m. until 1 a.m., something like that, and then go down another line, and we could say to drink minimum. Now, it looks like the font changed from here 
to here in the display, probably because I used some arrow keys. That's okay, we can select it all and change it to West and Free again, like so. Like that, and we're good to go. So now the minimum is wrapping to the next line. And as you can see with an area type box, the text will flow inside the box. So if a word is longer, it will automatically hyphenate and flow onto the next line. I can correct that by changing the size of this to something smaller. And I'll just guess here and say maybe 14 will work. And as a matter of fact, I'll bring that line up and maybe I want to move this line a little bit lower from where Saturday night is. And I can adjust this by changing the letting. So I'm just going to guess again, like 48. That gives me a little bit of space to isolate the two phrases together. And for this one, maybe I want to increase the size. I could put my cursor here and just use my up, down arrow keys to increase the size in any field. Now, another thing I could do, maybe I don't want to use that boring little dash. Maybe I want to use the word till, make it kicky. So I could go till and select that and make that really small, like, I don't know, let's do 10. That's good. And then I could tr free transform it. And I just did Command or Control T and hit Enter to accept it. And then I could pop it in space there. Let me move that guy like so. So now I have the till on its own layer behind. And let's hide this one for a second and move the other guy down like so. And I could use my arrow keys, and probably this needs to be even smaller. So let's do something like 7. There we go. And now that's in place. So area type is when you want your text to flow inside a specific area. And point type is when you don't really care, and you just have to manually enter your own carriage returns. Now underneath your type tool, there are some other type options. There's the vertical type tool, which would allow you to draw type vertically from top to bottom. And there's also two mask tools, and we'll deal with this in another lesson. But briefly, if you wanted to write something with vertical type, just click and start typing, and your type flows vertically like so. And I'm just going to drag that into the trash. Now I want to also show you another thing that's new in Photoshop CS6. I'll just do another area type box. In the Type menu, there is a new feature called Paste Lorem Ipsum. If you haven't heard the words Lorem Ipsum before, it's just a shorthand for saying, give me some dummy text and put it in this area. Lorem Ipsum is what they call Greeking text. It looks more like Latin, but it's not really Latin either. But it happens to have the same rough look of English type, even though it's not English words. So a lot of designers will drop in some lorem ipsum while they're working to sort of be a placeholder for regular type. And if you didn't know and you were squinting, it looks like roughly the size of regular English words. This is good when you're working on a layout. You don't have final copy yet, and you might need to drop in some of that type. So I will leave that. Oh, look, and there's even a label for this layer that says this is Photoshop's version of lorem ipsum which is what the beginning of the type begins with. So let's hide that. So I want to go over a little bit more in depth the character panel and the paragraph panel and show you some of the things that I briefly mentioned a second ago. So let's say we did want to modify the space between the M and the E. That would be the kerning, the space between any two characters. You could increase or decrease the space by scrubbing this area here, or you can use any of the presets there's also metrics versus optical, which changes how the letters are flowing from one to the other. So you could pick one or the other. One thing that I tend to do because I like to have more control over my characters is put the cursor in between the two letters. And then if you hold down your Alt or Option key and hit the left or the right arrow, you can incrementally step through the spaces until you have it the way you want it. Now with the tracking, what you would do is you would select a word or words, a whole block of text. And same as before, you could scrub to increase or decrease evenly the spacing between the letters. So you can swoosh them together or stretch them apart. I'm just going to set that back to zero. You could use any of those presets. And let's go into Saturday night. Maybe open mic is only open on the second Saturday night of the month. Maybe we want to superscript those. So we could click on this little button here, it will baseline shift the selection and just bump them up. But of course, we would have to change the point size down for it to look good. Now, one thing we could do is undo that 
and undo this because there is this button here that will automatically superscript for you. And what I love about this button is that not only does it shift the baseline, it also shrinks the type to a size that is proportional to the actual size, and you don't even have to bother with the superscript. And the same would work for subscripting if you needed to do footnotes or something. Now, some fonts do not have bold or italic, and that's where these buttons would come in handy. So if this font doesn't have bold, which it doesn't, you can create faux bold by clicking on this button. You could also do faux italic, which would shift the text to the side. You could do all caps, which it already is. You could do small caps, which would be, if this was, let me retype this in here, open mic like so. And then you could underline if you needed to, or strike through, which sometimes people do for humorous effect. And then in the options menu of your panel, there are some other options that you can access, mostly same things that you can choose with some of the buttons here, but you can also choose something called fractional widths versus system layout. And one thing I do, especially if I'm working with a lot of copy, so I might toggle between them to see how the letter shapes shift when I choose one or the other. Now when I shift to the system layouts, things don't look quite so good, so I'd probably leave it the way it was before. You could also choose whether or not to include breaks. So even if you had a paragraph break, you could say ignore it by turning no break on. And you can reset the character of any text block or selection by clicking this reset character box. At the bottom of the character panel, you could switch languages. So let's say you're working in the United States and then you go do a big job for UK. Changing it to UK English or Canadian English for that matter could be slightly different. And here's anti-aliasing. You could leave it on sharp. You could go to crisp, you could go to strong or smooth, and typically because every font renders in a slightly different way, you might want to scroll through those and pick the one that looks the best to you. Now, some fonts have these special ligatures and characteristics, and there is a special panel for when you're working with fonts that have those, and we'll open that up in a second. Now, when you're going into your paragraph panel, you can choose the alignment, which we saw when I had the type tool selected up here. So you can go left align, center align, right align. You could also do justify with the bottom row left aligned, justify with the bottom row center aligned, justify with the bottom row right aligned, or justify every old thing. So if I choose this open mic and do justify everything, it's gonna add spaces probably in an unnatural way. So if anything, doing the left align. And it looks like some things changed while I was playing around before. So if I wanted to, I could go back in time and change everything back to the way it was before I started playing around. There we go. I think I might need to do one more. There we go. Everything's the way it was before. Now back in the paragraph panel, in addition to working with the alignment, you can also adjust the indent on the left or the right margin. And this would be for the entire text block or selection. So you can indent just by clicking and dragging or indent from by clicking and dragging. This is usually more apparent when you have a lot of text or when you've just selected one part of it. So for instance, if I just click open mic and then left indent, you'll see how it's shifting ever so slightly from the left within this selection. I'm going to put that back to zero. Now the next one is to deal with your indenting of the first line of a text block, and this will work for the entire area type box that you have. So the first paragraph would indent, let's do like 10. So the first paragraph, wherever there's a paragraph break, would be first line indent of 10 or whatever you set it to. I'm going to put that back to zero. And then this would be letting or paragraph space before or on the other side after a paragraph. And this is more like if you're going to do a couple paragraphs of text and you wanted to separate them, you could just plug those in just by clicking and dragging or typing in the amount of points that you want those to be. Hyphenation rules are on by default, and you can turn that on and off here. It's a good thing to leave them on because you want your words to break in natural ways rather than unnatural ways. But if you wanted to control the hyphenation, you could go to the options menu for the paragraph panel and choose how things fall. So there's hyphenation rules here where you can choose how many letters in the word will trigger hyphenation effects. And then you could say how many letters before or after those effects will take place. So words longer than five letters, after the first two letters, a hyphen will appear. Or before the last two letters, the hyphen will appear and the letters would drop to the next line. You can also choose a hyphen limit and a hyphen zone. 
and even hyphenate capitalized words. It's a toggle that you can turn on and off. And while you're working and modifying these, you can preview your changes. Click OK to accept any changes that you make. There's also something called justification rules. And this is a pretty good setting. I probably wouldn't change this if I were you, but you could if you wanted to modify like the default auto letting or the spacing and so forth. This thing here, single line composer versus every line composer, will change depending on how much copy you have. Here we're not seeing a big flow of type. It's something that you would probably see more in a page layout program like InDesign or Quark, but I usually toggle when I have a lot of text between single line and every line composer because the type will flow from one line to the next in a slightly different way, and you may find one more visually pleasing than the other. This last thing here is Roman hanging punctuation, and with Roman hanging punctuation, this will determine whether or not your quote marks will fall inside or outside of the area type box. So with Roman hanging punctuation turned off, your punctuation will fall inside and align to the left edge of your type. However, when you have it turned on, and let me select this here again, when you have it turned on, your punctuation will fall outside the bounding box. I personally like that, but some people don't, so it's really one of those aesthetic preference things, whether or not you want to have it on or off. You have to select your box first before you make the change, like so. And I'm just going to delete those guys. Another thing you can do with your type, which is new in Photoshop CS6, is create styles that you can use over and over and over again on your document. This is kind of like something that you can do in InDesign right now, or even Illustrator right now, is create these character styles. So there's character styles and paragraph styles. And if you click on any one of them, you can open up the paragraph style options in this case. And then you could set some of the basic characters. So in this case, the basic paragraph has Myriad Pro as the font with regular and 35 point, 35 points, which is odd. I don't understand why it would be that big. So maybe the basic paragraph you'd want to set to something like 14 point. That would make more sense. And then standard vertical Roman alignment. I wouldn't want to add any other special faux characteristics to it or change anything else, and then I would save it. You could also go into the advanced character formats or any of these other categories to modify some of the presets that go along with this particular paragraph style. So if you wanted to modify any of these attributes, I'd say just go through each of these settings to see what you wanted to modify and customize, and then you'll click OK. Now we've modified the basic paragraph style, and we could apply that basic paragraph style to any selected text on our page. Same would go for working with characters. There's the none, which is sort of the default, which means like anything goes, you can create whatever you want. Or there's these two that I've already created. So there's this Vulcan type, and it chooses the font family and the font size. I always try to round my fonts up to whole numbers rather than leave them at fractions. I could change the default color from this pale, taupey, yucky color to a white. And I uh, probably wouldn't want to do anything else, but if I did, I can set those in these other categories and click OK. And then I could apply that Vulcan style to any other type. So let's say I wanted to create a new word here, blah, 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 blah. Then I could select that layer and apply the style to that layer. I'm just going to drag that into the trash like so. So you can create as many of these as you like, and you could go back in and modify them at any time. And especially if you're working with a really copy heavy layout, being able to go back in and apply character styles to different areas of your layout will help you work much more efficiently. I'm going to open up another file and talk about something else that I wanted to show you, which is working with masks. The other two buttons here are horizontal type mask tool and vertical type mask tool. And with this type mask tool, what I always recommend is that you set up your font before you begin typing because the mask works in a weird kind of a way. So what I would do is come in and choose my font first. So I'll just do something simple like Verdana. And then for my size, I'll go really big, like 170. Let's make it bold too, so we can really see the type. Oops, I'll go 170. And leave the anti-aliasing turned on. We'll center align the type. So now if I click and I start to type, my type will be center aligned in the middle of the page. So I'm going to type in all caps the word FERN. 
and you can see that I can see through the letter shape to the background. The background is masked in that blue color that we used from a previous lesson. So while I'm in here, I can make changes to the text. The text is currently editable. But once I click away, we've created a selection from the type. Now the type is no longer editable. It's an actual shape selection. If I wanted to reposition the selection, I just grab one of my marquee tools, put my cursor inside, and then drag downwards until I have it the way I want it. Now that I have the selection, I can work with a mask by clicking this button here to mask away everything except for the shape of the letters, which gives me a nice clean white background. And as you can see in the layers panel, the black areas are the mask and the white areas are the areas that we're seeing through the selection to the background image. You can work with that layer, that tool rather, in another way. So let me select a new layer and grab that tool again. Now we need this layer again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a duplicate copy with a keyboard shortcut, unlink those, drop that mask in the trash. And in this case, I do not want to apply it. I just want to delete it. And then I can use that fern copy below my layer one like so. So grabbing that type tool again, and we'll show that fern layer. And again, I'm going to click and type in the words fern. Now what I can do is inverse my selection move it down again, inverse the selection, and I can fill that selected area with a solid color fill. And that could be any color I want, so maybe this time I fill it in with black. So that's another way of working with that tool. Now uh, yet another way of working is if you have your type on its own layer, and this is without a mask, but just selecting type, and I'll click here again and type the word fern, selecting my move tool, putting it into position in the middle of the screen, just adjusting with my left, right, up, down arrows to position it the way I want it. You can actually use live editable type to um, make a clipping mask, but before you do that you have to put the type below the image layer, and then what you'll do is you'll put your cursor right on the line here between the two, hold down the Alt or Option key, and then click on the line and that image will now clip or mask the shape of the editable type. Now the last thing that I want to show you, not really working with masks or anything, but it's a way of working with styles to create interesting effects with your text. So I'm going to undo that clip and we'll just work on this one layer and we will again grab our type tool and write the word fern. Actually, let's just put this guy on top since we already have it. And then we're going to apply a drop shadow to the letter shape. Now the drop shadow can be as thick or as distanced from the letter shape as you want. I'm just going to do something pretty hard edge like that. And then I also want to apply a bevel and an emboss to this. Again, I might want to make it a little bit more obvious, like so. And then click OK. Because one thing that I didn't show you when we were working in the layers panel exercise was that besides adjusting the opacity, which is the opacity for all the contents of the entire layer, you could adjust the fill, which would be just the color, but not the effects associated with a particular layer. So in this case, if we bring the fill down to zero on our type, we still see the drop shadow and the bevel and emboss on our letters without seeing the actual colors applied to those characters. So that's all the things that I think you need to know about working with point type and area type.